Hello and welcome to the third and what I hope to be the final episode of the Black Screen Logs. This episode will have a lighter tone compared to the previous two, but this is not an overall direction I'm taking with the series. I like it to stay dark in here. Today I'm going to be talking about music and I'm going to make a very far-fetched comparison. Now to start it off, I'll say that I really like music. I like to listen to music and I feel that my day can't really go on without a music or a track fitting the current tone of the moment. And because of this, when I don't like music or it doesn't fit, fit any of my mood, then I just don't listen to the music. I forget about it. And now comes the, well, dare I say, interesting part. I've heard an argument in music criticism that a track can be made better with the context of said track, like the backstory behind it. I do not agree with that at all. I have two example, two two examples to illustrate that idea. The first one is um, the artist Poppy, which of course has a huge backstory behind basically all of her projects. And I don't think it's good. Well, that's my opinion at least. Like one of the most representative tracks of this is that one with like the two um, drastically different tones with, with like the half going happy-go-lucky when she goes yummy yummy and the other one uh, is, is where it's really dark and a little industrial on the sides, uh, very harsh. And I don't think the law behind the track, the, the backstory behind what led her to write that and I don't think it makes it any better. I just don't like it because it's a little on the nose and like it it could be so much better and it's not. Now my other example and that's where the far fetched nature of that comparison comes from is Mozart. I'll leave you a second to laugh maybe or just consider that this is probably the most far-fetched comparison you've ever heard of your day. Now, done. Now we, 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 we have then like this other track by Mozart that is just perfect and insane, insanely good, which is its Requiem. Mozart's Requiem, uh, made by two tracks, which I know of, maybe more, I'm not very aware uh, of this. The Lacrimosas and the and Confutatis, Confutatis which comes first by the way. Um, both of them have a backstory but stand on their own as good tracks and good music. Um, because of the fact that it's just expertly made. It's Mozart after all. And the backstory doesn't make it any better because there's already everything in the music. Um, for example, and that's in my opinion the best example in Lacrimosas, um, there's this really great idea of dread in how um, the chorus is uh, composed. You, you can feel something dying, you know, you can feel the, the, the withering away of the being and the, the, the almost rotting nature of this, um, of, of, of the music and of the artist inside of the music without even like understanding the lyrics which actually are not that related to the plot it, it is a little but not that much 
And because of this, because of the simple fact that the music is just communicating this emotion, this emotion of dread and uh, despair so well, the backstory doesn't have to add anything because the music is already good. Again, I think I'm repeating myself, but anyways, of course, the backstory is it was written when Mozart was dying of illness. And because of the fact that you know this backstory now, you, you, you might associate it uh, with, with the track now, but keep in mind that even if you don't have this backstory in mind, really the track stands on its own and doesn't have to have a backstory. Again, and I'll say this for the last time, music should stand on its own. Uh, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. I think it's going to be all for today. Good night. <laughs>